Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure healing, miracle working love. I want to talk to you today about miracles and microaggression, or reality and race. Let me give you a description of this teaching. Why do the media and politicians use the race tag to stir up more angst? The answer, again, it's the money, stupid. Politicians get votes. The media get advertising clicks. But in this podcast teaching, we will look beyond the veil and discover a more subtle force, a demonic agent with an assignment directly from the pit of hell. It is my personal belief that this assignment from Satan is threefold. Number one, to escalate conflict among people groups in society. Number two, to produce deterioration in your human spirit and psyche, thereby weakening you from within and reducing your productivity, your health, and your success. And number three, to exacerbate tension among entities, including international and municipal people groups, as part of the preparation for the coming world leader, the false messiah. We will examine the sinews of microaggression, which is the, really the soft underbelly of socialization and political correctness, facilitating weakness, and we will define a more accurate and perfect solution. So let's talk about miracles and microaggression, or reality and race. God is not colorblind. Have you ever asked a person, so what are you really? I asked a relative to check out a property near them for a friend of mine. The friend just wanted to know the layout and condition of the property, and my relative said, blacks have migrated there. I told my relative, don't plan on going to heaven because lots of blacks have migrated there. Having been a pastor of an all-black church years ago, I was the only white person there, I find such statements really denigrating. Microaggression is generally defined as communication of hostile, derogatory, or negative racial slights and insults toward people of color. However, I would include insults against white people also. Microaggression can sometimes be communicated in a subtle manner so that the person initiating the conversation may not realize the effect and may actually be unaware of any hurt affected. I have found that when the Lord gives you a great love or compassion for a certain segment of society, the enemy of your soul, who is Satan, will always find some member of that group to hurt you or to offend you in some way. It's simply an attempt to get you to stop helping or stop serving that segment of society. Brothers and sisters, we have to be mature enough as God's children to realize the source of the attack, to see behind the veil. Even pastors and ministers are subject to such attacks. Physiological colorblindness is an abnormal condition characterized by the inability to clearly distinguish different colors of the spectrum. It's interesting that Scripture identifies Messiah Jesus as the Son of God and as the light of the world. The light spectrum is the band of colors produced when sunlight is passed through a prism and from which mixing of the colors can produce any color. I want to talk to you about an African, a black man who saved a prophet's life. If you read with me in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 38, verses 7 to 13, it tells us, Now when ebed melech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, ebed melech went forth out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they cast into the dungeon, and is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there's no bread in a city. Then the king commanded Abimelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with you, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he dies. So Abimelech took the men with him, and went into the house of the king, under the treasury, and took from there old cast clouts and old rotten rags, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Ibn Melech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouts and rotten rags under your armpits, under the cords. And Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with the cords, and took him out of the dungeon.
and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Notice that the Ethiopian eunuch not only helped Jeremiah get out of the dungeon, but he made it comfortable for him. In other words, it's nice to help people, but it's even better to really be concerned about their situation. Now, let me talk to you about an African that saved this prophet's life, my life. When I was just about to throw in the towel one time, thinking my life was about over, and nobody knew about it, an African that I had ordained in the ministry contacted me from overseas, and he told me, God wants you to fast for three days, eating only after 7 p.m. He said, I will also fast for you and with you. He said, but ask God for one thing. Tell me about it. Tell me what it is, but do not tell anyone else. My friend, I did that, and my brother, my African brother, fasted with me. And at the end of three days, on the start of the fourth day, I was perfectly healed, and my life continued on and continues on in full health, serving the Lord God of Israel. Let me tell you now about a Hispanic man who saved my life. I was in the hospital after being stabbed by two men. A nurse was stationed at my bedside 24 hours while I had four tubes running in and out of my body. After coming to consciousness, I asked God to send some money to lay hands on me and pray for me. A Hispanic man who did not know me but had heard about me being stabbed came into a 2,500-room hospital, into my room on the ninth floor, and he said to me, God raised me from the dead one time, and he sent me to pray for you that you may be healed. He laid his hands on my head and prayed, Lord Jesus, heal my brother. A short while later, he walked out of the room and left, and I walked out of that hospital healed a few days later. I could have left earlier, but doctors wanted to observe me to make sure of the miracle. I've tried to reach Hispanics with the good news since then. Let me tell you about Asians that have helped me. I was leaving seminary during my graduate studies as I did not have the money to pay for my tuition. On my last walkthrough, I stopped by the mailbox in the lobby of the school to check my mail. In it was a check from Chinese Christians that covered my expenses. That was years ago, but I've tried to reach China with the good news since then. Between 5 to 7% of my website hits come from China. Let me tell you about Jewish people that have helped me. I've been helped in so many ways by Jewish people, with money, food, friendship, counsel, support, and in my ministry, not only in Israel, but also in the U.S. I've been offered great opportunities by Jewish people, not only from Israel, but from other places. I have profited much from personal contact and relationships with Jews. And this does not even take into consideration what I've received from the Jewish scriptures and from a Jewish Messiah, my Lord. I wanted to share these examples with you to let you know how I have been helped from people from different types of racial backgrounds, from different colors. But remember, the Lord Jesus said, it is impossible that offense will not come. As I said, I've been blessed by all different races and colors of people. I've also been offended by all different races and colors of people. Remember, Jesus taught us it is impossible that offense will not come. If we claim to be God's people, we need to see others as God sees them. We need to grow up, my friend. So what if somebody offends you? Don't throw the baby out with a wash. If we claim to be God's people, we need to see others as God sees them. We need to be colorblind, or conversely, to see the beauty of color, the beauty of the spectrum which God has created. We know scientifically that white is a balance of color, whereas black is the absence of light and hence of color. However, God has created them all and everything in between for his enjoyment. So why do we not at times enjoy them? Why do we not enjoy people of different colors? Be white, be brown, be black. The answer, because of sin. Satan is the chief hater and father of racism. The devil is the divider and attempts to use people and demons to build walls between mankind. We need to be spiritually discerning to recognize the attacks of the enemy and to build bridges of fellowship. This is only possible through the Holy Spirit. And it's easy to accomplish if we choose to do so. 
The key here is choice. Your choice influences your brain and your future, and the future of successive generations in your family line as well as humankind. Messiah Jesus taught us, it is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. You can read that in Luke chapter 17 verse 1 in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. Rabbi Shaul, or the Apostle Paul, declared to the Athenians at Mars Hill, And God has made of one blood of all nations of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might fill after him, and find him, though he be not far away from every one of us. You can read that in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 26 and 27. So, my friend, it's easy to determine that it all depends on choice and whether we want to please our Heavenly Father. Many years ago, I started publishing the good news in several languages so that I, by God's grace, could reach all nations of men that dwell on the earth. God's family is beautiful, no matter what the color or lack of color. And when we realize that it's our family, These are our brothers and sisters. We begin to see its beauty. The world would surely be dull if everything and everyone were the same. My brother and my sister, pray. Make that choice today that you will be an instrument of love through whom people of every color can see Jesus. In my latest book, Real Miracles for Normal People, I share how God used, and still uses, ideas to reach many cultures and languages, many colors of people, with the good news. Read it and learn from it. God may give you the next great idea which will reach the whole world for Messiah Jesus. And in the show notes of this podcast, I've provided four resources to help you accomplish that next idea that God gives you. The world and its people from every race, from every color, are waiting on you. Those four resources will take you through, my friend. God can do anything through you if you let him. And my friend, more important than anything else, really, in your personal life, even more important than your health, is this. If you were to die right now, do you know for sure that you would go to heaven? If not, pray this prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if Yeshua, Jesus, is really my Messiah, please reveal him to me, and I will serve you the rest of my life. Please forgive my sins. Help me to live for you the rest of my time on earth, and take me to heaven when I die. Amen. My friend, if you would like to work with us to do creative exploits for the Lord around the world to people of all colors, I placed a link in the show notes of this podcast where you can partake and partner with us. Remember, my brothers and sisters, that with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. What do you need? What do you want to do? What idea has God given you to reach people of all colors around the world in these last days? Go with God. You can do all things, my friend, through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Anointed One, Son of God. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Adonai. <laughs>